This is the Skywatcher Flexu 300P Dobsonian telescope, and uh, I've not finally find the time to clean it and put it up there. And uh, as usual, a cloud came. <laughs> so um, I just uh, adjusted it for terrestrial viewing, just to test and align the finder scope. This can be called as the ultimate uh, portable telescope for one person. And anything bigger than this will be extremely heavy, cannot be handled by one person. So the size of the mirror is 200 millimeter, slightly 205 millimeter, one foot. And uh, yeah, I'm using this uh, ex-military eyepiece, which has a lovely, this whole tank, I think, I bought it from the internet. Very cheap, actually. Uh, you have to pay for this kind of thing. This, I think the focal length of this is 37 millimeter. So it's really clear, and also you can put your eyes around with this eye cup. It really gives a good view, and then closes your eye. And bonus is that you can use this cap. The only thing is that I had to adapt a uh, two inch adapter to this. I used one two inch adapter for the uh, Hyperion, other Hyperion eyepieces. So it really works nice. Astrozap Shroud also exists on this telescope. I will do the first uh, daylight uh, view of this, first light of this, of course, I should say, tomorrow in the daylight when it is sunny. Uh, at the moment it's cloudy so we cannot do any. It's getting dark and cloudy. So, and okay, I'm now cleaning the mirror of this telescope. I've removed it. And as you can see here, we have some uh, spider web. So I'm just going to clean this also with a duster before putting the telescope uh, mirror back. This is Skywatcher 300P. That's one foot, and I could see NGC 2403 galaxy, uh, magnitude 8 uh, galaxy in the Camelopardis the other night. Really good, as despite all the web curve and the dust and everything. I could do it. Now, I marked everything so I know that the screws, this was the first one I opened, so that's the first screw, uh, the cross one was the second one I opened, so that's the screw. Then I opened this one, which is a circle one, the third, and the fourth, then this, and this. So I put them back exactly the way they are. The bottom ones are the, this and this. So we will see how it will go, and I will show you the result. And this is the mirror. I was worried this is the oxidation, it's not, it's just a little bit dust. I'm going to clean it now. I have the deionized water and the tap and everything ready. Uh, wool, cotton wool. Okay, I have done the mirror cell here and I've marked the uh, mirror holders, clamps, uh, and hopefully I will put it back exactly the same place. And I have done it in the past once. You see this label, this uh, sticker electric tape shows that. And uh, now it is the number two, and this will be number three. Uh, hopefully I will put the mirror exactly back on the way that it is, and I will remove it exactly the same way also. So let's do this, and uh, I remove, I, it's better not to wash it with this whole cell, because there are cork somewhere, it's floating on a cork, so the cork absorbs the water and just gets time to dry, or maybe it'll come off. So it's better to remove the mirror from the mirror cell. And I've done it in the past, so I'm doing it again. Okay, now what I've done is instead of removing the whole clamp, I just loosened one screw, this one, and remove the other one so we can turn it around and the mirror can just be pulled out. And then I can put it back the same way it was, so I don't lose any anything in this process. Okay, the whole mirror is now out. And this side, which has this, one of the marks will go anyway. Doesn't matter. We'll have a mark here. 
to your left there. Yeah, that's good. That shows that mark will be here. And this clamp will be to the yeah, left of it. Another mark here also tiny. And this is the bigger mark. This one is where this clamp will be. So this arrow which I placed already will be here. So let's go and do a cleaning. Okay, I've shown the full process in another video, this comprehensive video. So basically what I use is cotton wool, some washing up liquid, tap water, then uh, I spread some isopropyl alcohol that we use for, for rubbing alcohol. You just spray it there. Again, gently with the rubbing alcohol, you move it around like that. And then when it is done, you just wash it again and rinse it with the deionized water so no um, lime scale marks will be left on the mirror. Uh, you can refer to my uh, whole video about this and uh, this is the second time I'm washing this mirror so it just works. Refer to that one please if you want to see the whole process. So the mirror is clean, just didn't took more than 10 minutes so it's ready now. And I'm just rinsing it with the tap water, then after that I will use the dryness water. For removing the small droplets when I'm drying it, of course, I will use the uh, uh, tissue, just absorb the tip of the tissue, you bend it and make a sharp point where the tissue, then drop by drop you absorb them to the tissue. That way it works really well. Then you can put it back on the mirror stuff. Okay, the mirror is now left on this surface. Is it oven and there is a hood with the light over it, so I can see what's happening here. I may try a little bit to, with the air blower, air, air dryer, just to blow the, some of the water away. Whatever remains are absorbed by the tissue. The mirror already looks really nice and shiny. The mirror now is completely clean, back to the good way it was. I just clean up the uh, mirror cell and then install the mirror. I have now put the mirror back I uh, use gloves to lift it and put it here and the arrow is almost there. I just shift it probably a few uh, fractions of the millimeter, one millimeter, just to the left. And that will be done. Then I can put clamp it again. So the mirror is now done, is installed. Uh, I blame if you see it's nothing. It just, uh, I was transferring it. Anyway. The mirror is done. It's ready to put back in the telescope tube. I have to clean the telescope tube because it had copper. Just remember, tighten up the things, but not too tight. And do all little by little. So don't completely tighten up these two. Uh, do this one also. Do this one. Then uh, gradually tighten up. You start again from this, from this, from this. So you don't want to introduce any stress to this mirror. Okay, now the mirror is back in the cell and ready to be used. I will just try to see if I see collimation after that. I'll just wait for the dark. The sky is so clear, I can see the M13 with the naked eye. And easily I directed a telescope at it. This is a 12 inch Skywatcher Skyliner 300P and with the APM 20mm I can actually resolve the stars of this planetary nebula, uh, this global cluster M13. I can see individual stars to the core. <laughs> I'll make one just now put the 30mm ethos just to see how it will look. This is unbelievable. I can see the individual stars of the M13 Global Cluster. Every single one of them to the core can be seen. Never had such experience. 
definitely not with the 8 inch uh, meat uh, Schmidt Kessigran LX90. Question is, is it because I cleared the mirror today? I washed it, cleaned it completely, and now I can see the individual stars in M13. <laughs> the main mirror, 12 inch mirror, the same thing, um, and bigger. This is it is 13 millimeter, and this is the APM HDC 20 millimeter, and I can see individual stars. Thousands of stars I can see in the globular cluster in 13. Okay, I can see that the Nagler 31 millimeter tape drive mm. uh, doesn't give the same good view as the APM 20 millimeter. It's a bit wider angle, the stars are smaller, contrast is less, so I prefer the APM 20 millimeter. And better than that, even ETHOS 13 millimeter. Contrast increases a lot. But individual stars in APM 20 uh, and ETHOS 13 is much more numerous. You can see them in the Nagler, but not as individual as, as, an, as a myriad of stars as what it is in APM 20 image to the APM 20 is exceptional. <laughs> Nagler, nothing close to it. I don't have the Teleview ethos 21 millimeter, but uh, APM is better than the Nagler in this case. This is Skywatcher, mm, it's only a 22mm, it's a gem. This telescope is a refractor F5 uh, 12-inch uh, reflector, Dobsonian. Um, I've observed with uh, many eyepieces, including Naglia 31, with this instrument I'm talking about. Um, APM 20mm, 100 degrees, and Panoview. 38 millimeter and ETHOS uh, 13 millimeter and I can say that this eyepiece actually seems corrects the coma aberration the stars to the edge are completely circle dots no aberration, no deformation of the shapes of the star. This is a gem of a time. I'm watching the, I'm observing the M13 uh, nebula, uh, global cluster. The stars of the global cluster are visible, fill the stars around it, also sharp pinpoint to the edge. It's one of the best eyepieces. If you get one of these, <laughs> don't sell it ever. Don't get rid of it ever. You never find anything as good as this. 
is a magical magnification, 22 millimeter, 70 degrees, two inch eyepiece barrel size. And uh, he has a dark, provides a dark background, good contrast, at the same time, well corrected image. The thing is that you don't see this eyepiece ever on sale as second hand. Anybody who got it, they don't sell it. <laughs> this is a well kept secret. Now you may think Nagler or Teleview or something like that are really good. If you have not tested this one, <laughs> You will not know what is a good eyepiece. <laughs> and I bought it 50 pounds. <laughs> New. 52 pounds. This is the best eyepiece ever. Look at the size of the lens. This is the telescope I'm using, this big light bucket. Uh, this diagram shows how uh, different telescopes uh, show the impact. Okay, this is the max so vision. The 12 inch something and like the 24 millimeters. is as good as the. Skull Watcher SW822mm, I'm telling you, this is a good eyepiece. Tonight, of course, the viewing is uh, the good eyepiece. This is the Nagler SW822mm, and this is the Nagler SW822mm. Tonight, of course, the viewing is not as good as the last night. Last night, I could see thousands of stars right down to the core of the M13 global cluster. Tonight, I can see individual stars, even at the core, but they're not as distinct and divided as what it was last night. Last time I could see the, I could see the M13 with the naked eye, as bright as the near nearby star, which is I think is Alpha Hercules, uh, or whatever star is near it anyway, if it is not Alpha. And um, I could see it with naked eye, just just point to the telescope right at it. Tonight is not as visible as that. With the naked eye, no, it's not as good. Or you cannot see it with the naked eye, but with the telescope you can see it, and it's not as um, distinctive as last night. So it shows that it's seeing is important, even if you have a moderate instrument. Seeing is important. Oh, hallelujah! You can see the galaxy 6702, the one which is near the M13 uh, global cluster. <laughs> I just followed this pattern. Uh, M13 is between two stars which form around, mm, let me tell you, 120 degrees angle, or a corner like that, which uh, the corner of the angle is the M13, and two stars are there. If you follow from first star to the M13, then you have to go at a 120 angle, uh, degrees angle toward the right. Then same distance, go upward from there. Continue a little bit to the right. You see two stars. Down that two stars is a fuzzy faint, fainting fuzzy. And that is the NGC 6702. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> This is the finder chart for the constellation of Hercules, and uh, this is also the finder chart for the M13. You can see the NGC 6207, the top, the two stars in the, the lower and the left part of the cluster, you see. And the target is very easy in that 12-inch telescope. Of course, the eyepieces were, I was using were superb, they showed it also. Yeah, the thing is that, of course, I'm using the max vision 24 mm 82 degrees. The thing is that M13 itself, globally cluster, is magnitude 4.5, so it's quite bright, actually. Uh, NGC 6702 is magnitude 12, as far as you remember. So, really good. I can pick it up. I couldn't see it with the other pieces. I've not tested it yet, so I've just may put other pieces and test to see if I can see with them also. Hallelujah. 22 millimeter SWA Skywatcher and 
NGC 6702 is actually better um, and with direct vision you can see, it's only diverted vision anymore. Direct vision is there and you can see it. And <laughs> hallelujah, APM 20 millimeter also shows it and I can see some details actually in that uh, Galaxy NGC 6702. It starts to show some details getting darker of course when you increase it with magnification but the wider field of view also is very nice here in this case so APM also stands out direct vision visible okay Hanover view 38 millimeter is very good for finding the M13 itself you can see the NGC Galaxy NGC 6702 with it but it's not good if you just want to uh, find it for the first time. You have to use something a little bit with lower magnification, uh, sorry, with higher magnification, something like 22, uh, Skywatcher, SWA, or Max Vision 24, or APM 20. That will make it really, really easily visible. With this one, uh, the faint objects is get lost among the older details and because it's tinier you don't see the extension of this faint fuzzy galaxy so I will go for a lower uh, uh, focal length higher magnification definitely better although this is good it shows up all the field of view from all those three star two stars and uh, uh, around the M13 and the two little ones which are near the NGC 6702 you can see all of that uh, this is the image of the uh, M13 which I took with the Hobe Pite camera plus camera and an 8 inch Schmidt, uh, uh, Schmidt Cassegrain telescope it shows the red stars very clearly these are the bigger picture, bigger images of the NGC uh, which hopefully it shows NGC 6207 as you can see it's a galaxy uh, I have a better image of that here and you can see some uh, hydrogen alpha hydrogen uh, 2 regions in that image uh, interestingly Hubble Orbital Telescope also have taken some images of this you can see them here it's uh, relatively close 30 billion light years galaxy from us and uh, thank you for watching. So I wanted to ask you that how you actually adjust this. You told me that you use a software to find the coordinates of a uh, yeah, yeah. star. You bring that a star into the center. You center it practically in your Dobsonia. That's right, yeah. Then you put your magnetic marker and you put it there, you already have added the base That's there. Right. Yeah, yeah. Then you use a big Vixi, which is already leveled, yes. and you put it there, That's and then based on that level, you just actually go to that uh, declination, yeah. or whatever it is, yeah. alt azimuth, alt I think, altitude. Yes. And then that's it, you are the sensor. You, you are calibrated, and you can go anywhere in the sky using that software. So the that's next time you beautiful. want to go to 20 degrees, uh, move it around to 20 degrees, yeah. and then it, if it's at 70 degrees altitude, put it at 70 degrees, look in here, and it will be there. That's it. Let's see that. Oh, that's a beauty. Yeah. Lovely. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know whether you ever go to Kelling. Do you ever go to Kelling Heath? No. Yeah, but that's astronomy's